Welcome back to Urology 101. Today's topic, hematuria, which is a really fancy word for blood in the urine. Sometimes we'll have guys come in, or women, and they'll say, and they will be terrified, and they will say something about looking down and seeing a whole bunch of pink, red urine, blood clots, or purple urine, or anything like that. And if you've ever seen that, it's pretty affronting. And a lot of people will get on the internet, do some searches, find out that they should be really concerned about cancer. So what I want to start with now, especially if you just had that happen to you and you're searching around the internet and you're trying to find out what in the world this is and you want to get in and see a doctor. If that's going on right now, just relax. It is very, very likely not cancer. Yes, we get concerned about that and we'll go through all that. But let's start off with what it is and then kind of what we do. And there are a couple types of hematuria. So the first one, or really what we call it is microscopic hematuria, which means that when we look at urinalysis, there's some extra red blood cells in the urine. And then there's the other type, which if you look down and see blood, you see blood clots, you see it grossly. So we call that gross hematuria. Now, they both get worked up the same. And the workup really just involves looking at all the organs that are involved in making urine and getting rid of it. And so that involves looking at the kidneys, the ureters, those muscular tubes that take urine from the kidney down to the bladder, look at the bladder and the urethra. And then you've covered all the organs that are involved in making and getting rid of urine. And we do that really through a two to three step process depending on who you work with. So there are urine studies. We will usually get a urinalysis and culture to make sure you don't have an infection because some infections can give you blood in the urine. So if you have those symptoms, that's probably what it is. Sometimes we'll do another type of urine study called a cytology, and that's where we look at the cells in the urine, but we don't always do that, sometimes. And then we'll start doing what's called imaging or three-dimensional imaging. So we will either use a CT scan or an MRI, or sometimes even an ultrasound, and that sort of depends on the patient, depends on some of the scenarios, depends on renal function, and, and we'll get a better idea and a three-dimensional look at the kidneys to see if there's any concern for stones or lesions um, or typically what we're looking for sometimes are cysts or even like a mass usually and very rarely does kidney cancer or cancer around the kidney present with blood in the urine but it can sometimes it's just not a common presentation so so please don't be really overly concerned about that Usually with all of the abdominal imaging nowadays, we find cancers in, in kidneys a lot sooner than when they would cause blood in the urine. But those three-dimensional images give us a view of the ureters as well. And a lot of times we'll have what's called contrast um, given during those studies. And that's where you get an IV and you get some stuff in you that makes you feel kind of warm and nauseous sometimes. And that is really good at helping us see the organs really well, see around them, see that contrast goes through the kidneys well, that it gets into the ureters at the same time on each side, and then gets down the ureters. And we can look in the ureter to see if there's some sort of either lesion in the ureter or if there's a stone there. And then the next step is looking inside the urethra and bladder. And for all the fancy tests that we have to look at people from radiology and just lab tests, there's no better way to examine and understand the urethra and the bladder than just looking at it. So again, the fancy word for that is cystoscopy. And that just means that we're taking a flexible telescope or a small telescope going through the urethra into the bladder. It takes about 30 seconds to a minute. You will feel some pressure. I have to be honest, nobody jumps off the table and asks for seconds. It's not the most enjoyable thing, but it's not terrible. Most of us will put some um, numbing gel or that has some anesthetic in it inside the urethra that will help with the situation. And, and again, it's not perfect, but it's just not that bad. And that gives us a chance to make sure that there isn't anything in the bladder that could be causing blood in the urine and also in the urethra. And so again, the three steps to a workup for blood in the urine, which is also called hematuria, is urine studies, imaging to look at the kidneys and ureters, and then the cystoscopy to look at the bladder and the urethra. Now, the main goal of this workup is twofold. One, if we find a problem, we've identified it, and then we can talk with you about it, about what the best course of action is. 
The other main goal is let's say we find nothing wrong. That's okay. Most of the time when we do hematuria workups, we actually don't find anything wrong. So our main goal is to come to you and say, look, I don't know why you had blood in your urine, but we've looked at all the organs that are involved and they all look okay. So I wanna give you a lot of reassurance that everything's fine. So go forward, go on with your life, don't worry about it. And then just get a urinalysis with your primary care doctor in about a year. That's, the, that's what we're going for. And if we find something that's not normal or something that's a problem, then we talk about that. About 90 to 95% of the time with microscopic hematuria workups, we don't find anything wrong. And the most common thing would be stones. Sometimes also it can be just an enlarged prostate, which most people present from different reasons, and that's a different conversation. But very, very rarely, less than 3% of the time, are we actually coming across cancers from microscopic hematuria, meaning when you just see some red blood cells in the urine. With gross hematuria, that number bumps up a little bit to maybe 15 or 25%, depending on the studies. But again, that's 15 or 25% of people who do not have urinary tract infections or some other pain thing that might be involved in a stone or something like that. So I don't want you to get too worried. I do want you to see your physician, whether that be a urologist or primary care, and then the primary care people to get you over to a urologist because it is something that does need to be worked up but it is probably gonna get worked up and end up being all negative or normal. So I hope that gives you some reassurance. Take care of yourselves, take care of your families, get some sleep. Have a good day. We'll see you soon, bye.